Oh, uh, here we go. Today, right here, right now, this is the moment that you'll finally say, I'm growing my accounting practice. And you're gonna discover exactly how, right here, right now, on the Grow My Accounting Practice Podcast, episode 103. Woo-hoo. Here we go. I love this music. You get pumped up with this, Karen? You feeling, Aaron? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, everyone. This is Mike Michalowicz. I am the author of Profit First, and I am the co-host of GMAP. Usually it's Ron Saharian, but today, Aaron Danson Mosher's here. Hey, Aaron, how are you? Hi. And uh, we are going to be talking about growing your accounting practice. It's a show called GMAP that stands for Grow My Accounting Practice. And this is where we teach you the step-by-step how to grow your accounting or bookkeeping practice. And it's the only show on the entire interweb where we give you the one action task that if you do it right here, right now, you will grow your practice. Plus, we have the psychology of the sale. That's where Ron shares some, like, mind voodoo stuff. (laughs) We have the GMAP Now task. Literally, the one task at the end of the episode that if you do it, you will grow your practice. This is 103 tips now. So you better do it and you'll grow your practice. And plus we interview a great guest, right? (laughs) Aaron's on her head, yeah, no doubt. Uh Uh-huh. And um, we are available, you know, where we are, Aaron? On what what networks, what channels? Oh, yeah, I do. I'm throwing it We are available on on iTunes, Yeah. Stitchers, um, TuneIn Radio, and GrowMyPracticeAccountingPractice.com. Yeah. Actually, I didn't tell you I'd throw that your way, and I did, so I apologize. (laughs) She's back to her dancing. Shoulders are moving. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so listen, if you're on iTunes, subscribe. If you're on Stitcher, subscribe. Get every episode. Don't miss it. We're everywhere on all the podcatchers. And GrowMyAccountingPractice.com, that's where you'll find our top 10 list. And uh, this is sure to be one. Because today we're going to discuss with Karen Delarippa what it's like to be growing a practice aggressively, and then you get punched in the gut by like every disease known to man simultaneously, <laughs> called pneumonia. <laughs> right? Yeah. It was pneumonia. It was pneumonia. Pneumonia. Well, yes. that's basically every kind of disease. You get punched in the gut by pneumonia, and how do you recover <laughs> when the the key to the organization is out? Well, Karen's company's navigated through it, and I'll tell you, it's been a very bumpy road, but you did it. Yep. And you're still. You're on the other side of this, but you still have to navigate some of the consequences. So we're going to explore all of that. Um, and before we get started, though, I do want to do a couple of shout outs and thank yous to our corporate partners. These are the folks who make this show a reality. Aaron, uh, do you want to kind of list off who we got? We have Nextiva. Yep. Our awesome um, voiceover IP. Stay real close to that microphone. We have Fundbox. Yeah, there you I go. I love Fundbox, actually. Me I, too. And I recommend them to everybody. It's a great way to kind of fill in that that void. Um, we have Fundera, and we also have Receipt Bank. Yeah, so we'll tell you more about them. Of course, NetPayroll.net we talked about earlier. Oh, thanks also to American Express. There's a new show I'm doing called Turning Points. It's a podcast. You can download that. Just go to any podcatcher and type in Turning Points, and you'll see the show I'm hosting. Oh, and by the way, we have monthly webinars, too. So if you want to get access to one of our monthly webinars, it's real simple. Just go to uh, or to type this in on your phone. The phone number is 678 678- Five zero six seven five four three, and type in GMAP. That's G M A P, and you can get access to our free monthly webinars. Again, six seven eight five zero six seven five four three. That's the number to send it to. Send GMAP, the word GMAP, to that number, and you'll get access for free to the monthly webinars. Her name's Karen Dalrippa. She owns. <laughs> Did everyone? Any, how do they pronounce your name in like high school? Did you have a? Well, it's not my. I wasn't Della Ripa in oh, high school. Oh, touche. Mm. Okay, touche. But we get Della Priya a lot. Well, that's just poor reading. Really, they just reverse yeah. the P. Yeah, and then I actually had someone call me uh, years ago off the Pro Advisor website. Yeah. For QuickBooks, um, asking if I was Kelly Ripa's sister. Oh, and you're like, yeah. I'm like, Della Ripa. Yeah. You're not Kelly Ripa. That's well, maybe story. maybe she thought it was Karen Della. Dash Ripa. I don't know. You I, should say yeah. And she's the yeah. bitch. <laughs> um, so Karen is the founder of Beyond Your Books, which is a profit first consulting organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also are outsourced bookkeeping and payroll and a QuickBooks consultant. Um, some of the big things you've done, you're a mastery member, profit first professional. Mm-hmm. Uh, only, I think, 30 mastery level profit first professionals exist in the entire world. So that ain't easy to do that. It requires intensive, lots of one on one time we spend together. Mm-hmm. Um, top, you're a top 100 uh, QuickBooks Pro Advisor, three consecutive years? Four years. Four, Four years. years now. Yeah. And how many 
pro advisors are there? There's like thousands. Thousands. Thousands yeah. in your top 100. Three years. Four years. Four years. <laughs> it says three. <laughs> well, that Four. was because I wrote that before they announced the, yeah. this year's. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, your company has seven employees now, <clears throat> including yourself? Yes. Okay. So if, as fine, as, a sizable organization. And you also, in your spare time, which I don't understand how you even have spare time, <laughs> you run a summer camp. I do. And who's the summer camp for? Um, so the lake where I live, we have a small summer camp that's been in existence for almost 90 years. Okay. I went there as a kid. And since I moved back to, uh, 14 years ago, 13 years ago, I um, have been on the com volunteer committee that runs this camp. So we start meeting in January and hire all the coaches and plan all the events and... Camp starts a week from yesterday, so uh -oh. um, for the summer. So we do seven weeks. It's a day camp. Um, it's very old fashioned. We don't allow electronics. We're outside all day swimming. Uh, we have a swim team. We compete against some other lakes in the area. Wow, that's um, so cool! You do that. What's the yeah. age limit? I might be free next <laughs> yeah. week. Yeah, I know. I wish I could go myself. <laughs> are you, um, really? Unfortunately, it's seventeen. Oh. But. <laughs> Don't. There are some adult summer camps out there. Sign but Nora yeah. can come in a couple more years. I'll keep it on my list. Yeah. Yeah. Very seriously. Yeah. It's it's a great camp. We have a great time. That's awesome. All right. So so welcome officially to the show. It's, it's a pleasure Thanks, to have Mike. you here. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> so let's go first. Let's start with the day you come down with pneumonia. Um, you're running your business that day. You're running your business. I know you're pulled left and right all the time. And you get sick. Like, what goes through your mind in that moment? I can't be sick. <laughs> right. There's no time to be sick. Right. Um, and it hit me, like, in, like, minutes. I was fine, and then I wasn't. That's unbelievable. And it was two months. And Now, pneumonia, I thought someone, like, if you're in the hospital, I hear about elderly people contracting pneumonia, but I don't yeah. hear about someone, a young person like yourself. Mm. Yeah, I've had it a few times now. What? Um, yeah, this is the third time I've had it in six years. It's that freaking oh camp, Aaron. Probably it's sick camp. camp pneumonia. <laughs> By the way, it's called camp pneumonia. I don't know. Camp pneumonia, yeah. <laughs> it's called uh, not paying attention to myself enough. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it must be. So yeah. what, what is pneumonia exactly? Um, so you get fluid in your lungs and you it. the worst part about it is it makes you so tired. You just mm. have no energy, mm -hmm. but you don't feel sick enough to stay in bed. So like you don't have like with me, I didn't I didn't feel terribly, terribly sick. I just had no energy. And so I was pushing myself to still work. The doctor's like, take it easy. You need to rest. Well, sitting at my desk and just sitting to me is n yeah. not exerting energy. You know, it's exerting brain energy, but. So, so, so since you had pneumonia before, did you recognize the symptoms instantly? Say, uh oh. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, because I had like a pressure in my chest. Okay, that felt so you kind of recognized it. <clears throat> and when do you know? Uh -oh. Sorry, no. I know. Just thinking oh, about sake. it. <laughs> Shoot, yeah. just thinking about it makes me cough. <laughs> so, do you remember when you contracted it? Like roughly the day or time? January nineteenth. Okay, January nineteenth. <laughs> I only remember that because two years ago on January 19th, I fell and sprained my ankle really badly. Oh. And it just was weird that it happened the same it's day. It's kind of coincidental. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. January 19th, you, you contracted. You are entering <laughs> what bookkeepers call the hell. The nightmare. Yeah. The nightmare period <laughs> oh of business. Mm -hmm. What is that range of time where the biggest demands on you? Um, the last two weeks of January and the and most of February. Okay, so January, February, the biggest demand on you. Mm -hmm. The what are the typical hours that you experience during that period? Oh, I'm usually working at least ten hours a day. Ten hours a day, plus your team of six other people mm -hmm. are working ridiculous hours. Well, yeah, I mean, all of our people are part time. Okay, so. They were working on, they were doing their own, you know, they were doing their stuff and, and, but yeah, it was, I mean, I definitely work more than they do. Okay. So you're, you're working crazy hours. They're working somewhat, but I also suspect it's a little bit of what I call the deciding model, meaning you have all these people doing work, but you still need to make all the decisions. Yep. So uh, I, you, you remember that statue or, or, or thing from uh, mythology? It's the one body, but with the six arms. Yeah. 
You know what I'm talking yeah. about? The I think it's an Indian thing. I couldn't tell you the name of it, but we can absolutely reenact it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. reenact it, yeah. right? You, yeah. <laughs> it's the old thing. Like, if you had two friends, you had the two friends stand behind you, they hide behind you, and they move their arms yeah. like this. To me, that's kind of, it sounds like the business model where it's one head, your head, and all these different arms you got to manage, mm -hmm. which means people are coming to you constantly saying, hey, Karen, how do I do this? What do I do here? Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And during this period, January, February, mm -hmm. I assume the most of the questions are flowing in because they have to get their work done too. Yep. Okay. With pneumonia, can you be on the phone at least? Like just saying, hey, do this, do that, do this, do that? Or um, I was mostly emailing. Okay. Yeah. Because um, I couldn't really talk on the phone because I would cough. Okay. So you can't talk. Yeah. You're emailing. Can you stare at a screen 10 hours a day? No. Okay. Why not? I was so tired. Really? Yeah. How many hours yeah. did you end up sleeping a day? I can't even imagine. I, well, I didn't sleep enough. That was part of why it... I was sick for two months. So, cause I didn't, I didn't, I pushed myself too hard. Okay. Um, but literally like I was on the phone with Rich one day, Rich is my business partner and yeah. I'm pointing to him cause he's sitting he's over a, here. Yeah, yeah, texting um, away. His mic front's <laughs> turned off. <laughs> um, I was on the phone with him one day and I was walking down the stairs in my house and I literally could not take another step. And I sat down and I was like crying on the phone. Like I can't even move any, I can't, Mm. I just had, I had no energy to oh my go any further. And which day was that? Would you say? I think that was in February. I think that was like a month in. The, okay. Because oh, wow, you know, because after yeah, because like it kept lingering. I kept going back to the doctor, and I'm like, why am I not getting better? Why is this not going away? I was on antibiotics. Yeah. I was on steroids, Oof. and it just wasn't going away. So a month in, besides not feeling well, I was also like emotionally like drained because it wasn't getting better yeah. you know yeah so what's the prescription to getting better i needed to rest more and you weren't doing it and i wasn't doing it because mm. i didn't i well i'm i i can't just sit in bed i can't unless i feel so bad that i'm just you know that i have to be in bed right but i didn't feel like i had I, it's hard to explain. I had no energy, but I could sit at my desk for a while, like for periods. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sick, like fever and sweating and achy yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know, where you just want to curl up in bed. So I, I would get up every day and I would, you know, get dressed and do my, try and do as much work as I could. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, I, I pushed myself too hard. So what happens to the business now? You the The brain of the six arms is... Done, yeah. at least for now. Yeah. Does everything stop? Um, well, unf yeah. So, unfortunately, what happened with us was, you know, I I didn't communicate to my clients that I was sick because I was trying to hide that from them okay. and be business as usual. Sure. But stuff started, you know, I started forgetting stuff, dropping stuff, um, and and be and I wasn't as communicative as I should have been, which is a big lesson that I learned. Yeah, I want to go over the lessons yeah. learned in a little bit. So let's yeah. let's go through the story. So yeah. you're not as communicative. Uh, your employees are they trying to cover for you too? Yeah, yeah, they were. I mean, they were they were doing the best they could, and yeah. you know, getting as much done as they could. Okay, but there were certain things that I had to take care of, and that part wasn't getting done. So the day-to-day -day work was mostly happening. Okay. Um, but, you know, my I had 400 emails in my inbox at one point that, like, my process is I leave them in my inbox until I answer them or act on them. Right. And usually, you know, there's maybe 50 to 75, you know, in a day. Yeah. That, but there was, it was like up to 400 and I just wasn't able to keep up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can't keep up. So now I assume that the trickle effect starts happening. People are like, mm -hmm. Karen's not responding. You don't want to say you're sick because you don't want them to feel at, they're at risk. Cause I I'm assume. super woman. Right? Yeah. You're super woman, right? You're, you deliver, you know, like the post office rain, right. sleet, you'll be there. So you don't want your customers to feel that you're not available, but you're not responding because you're literally wiped out. Yeah. So what happens with the customers? They start going, yeah, something and, and they're getting pissed off, and yeah, yeah, and you know, um, when I finally did tell some of them that I was sick, they're like, yeah. you know, why didn't you just tell us? We would have understood. Yeah, but my mindset is always, you know, I we need to deliver, and you know, and and what I learned was that, you know, and I know we'll talk about this again, but you know, that clients understand that we're human. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about 
you, when, when did you get healthy again? Healthy enough to start working at least. I mean, um, you still have that cough, nagging cough, but you know. Actually. Oh my. So, <laughs> so. Um, it was um, the beginning of March that I finally All right, so started. this took you from January 19th to March. Beginning of March, so yeah. Beginning of March. To, so you're out for two, two, two solid months. Two months I was dealing with this. And that's like the whole season. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. yeah. For what you have to do. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. How much of your work as a company would you say is done during this period, percentage-wise? Um, well, I'd say 40%. Yeah. That's my assumption. Yeah. I mean, we do payroll, so we've you know we've got W-2s to get out and yeah. urine stuff and te- tons of 1099s that we have to do. That's a big part. Yeah. And then just close... I mean, we do our books real time for almost everybody, so okay. there, wa- there wasn't a lot of like, you know, crunch for a year end, yeah. but it was all the review. And I had a lot of my clients, tax accountants saying, you know, we need the books, right. we need the books. And I wasn't getting them closed. I wasn't reviewing them to finalize them to be able to get them done for okay. taxes. Right. Cause the accountant starts going, I need this. I yeah. need this. And they start pointing the finger at you. Yeah. Okay. So how did the season end for you? I mean, did you lose customers? Did you, um, we lost a couple. I yeah. I had I really had to do some, you know, I made some deals with a couple to, um, you know, waive some rate, some fee. Like, yeah. you know, I, I gave people discounts on fees a little bit, a um, yeah. few people um, to smooth out, you know, to smooth everything over. Um, but there's a lot of um, ass kicking. <laughs> Kissing, ass kiss, <laughs> yeah. ass kissing. You had your ass kicked. <laughs> I had my ass kicked. In return, and I was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was um, a lot of ass kissing. Yeah. So okay, where does the business stay today? I mean, are you fully recovered? Are you still kind of recovering as a business from this? <clears throat> um. So I I think from that we've pretty much recovered. I think we just maybe finally dealt with our last client that had been affected by that that wasn't happy and um, okay just in the last couple of weeks. Um, but yeah. And so really what it made us realize was that we need more systems in place. We need to reduce my bottleneck and have yeah. other people take on some of the stuff that I'm doing. So we've, so when I was sick, we weren't seven, we were six people okay. and we've, we lost one, but gained two. So now we're up to seven. Do the, the employee you lost, was that by design or was um, it also part of this? No, it was totally a separate situation. Yeah. She, um, it was personal reasons on her part that she had to leave. Um, okay. so, so we lost her, but we gained two new people and we've made decisions to have them not only do bookkeeping work for us, but do some administrative stuff gotcha. to help. One of them is monitoring my emails now to make sure that, you know, if she sees anything, if I'm, if I'm out yeah. for the day or something, she knows, you know, or if a phone call comes in, she can call them back and at least say, Karen, I'll get back to you by tomorrow. Now, um, now let so, me ask you, during this phase, did the actual work ultimately get done? Mm-hmm. Did the work get done at least to the time frame that people needed? Most, mostly. mostly. Mm-hmm. So the work did get done. Yeah. It got done mostly to the time frame they needed. Mm-hmm. Was anyone compromised by this? Just timing was the issue, but yeah, I don't think so. Okay, and so. was there any inaccuracies? Was the work done? So no. The, so it, the quality stayed. Yeah. The accuracy stayed. Yeah. The timing was pretty much there. A little bit delayed. Yeah. So what? Did, what can people get pissed about? I think just the lack of communication. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you did everything right still. Yeah. If they if they had offshored this, and I don't know why I'm picking offshore, but if they, they went to an entity that is more notorious for, for lack of communication, that's mm-hmm. why I'm saying offshore. Someone that doesn't communicate effectively, but the work got done, um, they would have had an expectation for no communication, and I think they would have been satisfied, right? Because the work was accurate on time. Yeah. Right, but part of what we as a business you know, when we set expectations, yes. that part of it is communication. So people are really buying from you communication. Yeah. I mean, they, they buy all the things you do, but what differentiates you is communication. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that fell apart and that's why people felt the sting. Yeah. So let, let's go now to the lessons. Yeah. Was that a fair, a fair assessment? Rich is, uh, is from the distance kind of, yes or nod or just not? Yeah. Personal touch. Yeah. Personal touch. All right. Personal touch. Okay. 
Uh, so, okay, let's go into the lessons learned. Um, you said you did not communicate because that you were sick. Mm -hmm. What should you have done and what can you teach your folks listening in if this happens, like it pulled out? Yeah, so I think you have to be proactive. And, you know, when, you know, you've been sick for a week yeah. when and you feel like it's not getting better, you, I think, you know, a, a quick email to your client saying, hey, I'm a little under the weather. Please bear with us. You know, we're we're experiencing a little bit of a delay. You know, just something like that would goes such a long way. And so it's interesting. You said you communicate the situation, but I also started hearing you say, here's what we're going to do about it. So it's right. more than just communicating. I'm sick. What, what's kind of the second part of that communication is, you know, we're, we're going to do our best to get everything to you as soon as possible. And we'll keep you updated as we go, you know, and let you know of any future delays. Okay. And do, are you, would you tell them how you're going to go about it saying, you know, I'm sick. We're going to communicate going forward, but you may not hear from me as I recover. You're going to hear from Rich or someone else. Is that? Yeah. I mean, that could be part of it too. Okay. Um, I, yeah. I haven't thought through what that would feel, what, what that would really look like yeah. yet, but I'm sure, you know, we definitely, the big thing we learned was we have to communicate something up front okay. and, and let them know rather than just being silent and, and letting things drop. Okay. So, Okay. You said also deals to fix customers. I want, I want to learn about that lesson. You said, you know, I had to go to customers and then give them some deals. Yeah. What, what's that so, all about? So we charge a flat monthly fee for our bookkeeping services. Okay. So I discounted a couple months uh, for some people and gave a, a few people a few months for free. Okay. Just to smooth out, you know, smooth over the relationship. Okay. And for those people, um, do they ask for that discount? No. Okay. So you approached him and how do you approach someone like that? Um, well, I knew they were upset. And okay. so, you know, I just talked to them about it and said, you know, I know I've been really sick and we didn't get this done, you know, in the time frame that we would have hoped to. And, you know, I, and I really want to, if I felt like they were, had a foot out the door, then yeah. I would say, you know, I really want to still work with you. And, you know, how about if the next two months we don't charge you and I okay. go back to the fees after that to just make up for what, what happened. And what do you think that has customers, to, how they respond to that? Um, in your opinion, th they were very appreciative and, okay. you know, at that point, um, and, and took us up on it and yeah. Okay. So you, you proactively offered some kind of remuneration. Yeah. Or not to every, I mean, I just, if, if I felt like we were going to lose them, yeah. um, then I did that. Um, and did it work? It did it result in retention of all those clients? Um, all except for one, I think. Okay. Yeah. And so let's talk about that one that it just didn't recover. Uh, they, you're, they're no longer working with them, right? They're gone. Right. Do you think they were inevitably going to go and this became kind of the trigger, yeah. kind of like a breakup with a with a boyfriend or girlfriend, right? Yeah. Like, Waiting oh. for that one thing. Yeah. Aaron did that <laughs> with her boyfriend, didn't you? No, not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Doesn't she married sound, her boyfriend. Doesn't sound like me. <laughs> no, she married her boyfriend. So that was kind of funny. That was a funny. Um, but yeah, but you see that in these relationships where people just wait until they find the reason, but mm -hmm. really there's this underlying. Yeah, there was always, it was a difficult client anyway. We we didn't really click to begin yeah. with. Um, mm. So, yeah. So, Do you feel like you walked away out of, with a win with that? Good point. I, I think so. I think it made room for somebody better to come along. Okay. Um, and so what, what's the plan going forward now? So the plan going forward, like I said, um, one of the women we just hired yeah. is starting to work on systemization um, of and, and getting pro better processes in place for us. Um, and also she's going to start doing some of the higher level review work that only I have been able to do in the past. Um, so I'm training her, I'm working with her to take some of our smaller clients and do that month end review that normally I would do. And so to try and get rid of some of the bottlenecks, Okay. That, you know, I, I mean, I am the biggest bottleneck in the business. It's classic. Yeah. It is a and classic. So I'm trying to look at where I'm the bottleneck and what we can offload from me onto somebody else. Okay. Um, and I think that that's the biggest thing that's, you know, going to solve this problem going forward. Yeah, for sure.
Yeah. Not to plug myself, but that new book I have coming out is about <laughs> this specifically. And yeah. you, were, you were there in that class. Mm -hmm. So, I, Aaron, I did a, I don't think you were there, but our mastery meetup for our Prop First Professionals, we had 30 folks or so in that room. So fun. It was fun, right? It was awesome. It was a great event. We did a cool retreat. Rich was down in cookies like they're going out of style. I really wanted to join that retreat. <laughs> oh, did you have any of those cookies we had? No, I did not. They were <laughs> a sore spot in my heart. Believable. Oh, now, I thought I'll whole, make some more. <laughs> the whole factory tour, too. We, well, I'm talking about the cookie factory. Oh, the cookie. Oh, my, your cookies I, yeah. are sick. They should be in a factory. <laughs> no, they are so good. Like, they put the factory to shame. But the factory <laughs> made good cookies. They did. The Jimmy's cookies. They did. I brought you those cookies. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. They were amazing. Yeah. So, um, but I want to talk about that meeting. So we had that meeting, we're sitting around mm -hmm. and I talked about that concept of the QBR, the queen bee role. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to reveal too much because this book's still a year out. I'm actually writing it right now, but Cindy used this and th the core concept and you're pointing to this is there's a certain function It's often the owner it doesn't have to be what the owner does that moves the entire business forward. Mm -hmm. Or if it doesn't happen, the entire business comes to a screeching halt. Mm -hmm. And for you, it doesn't sound like it's, doing the books and all the things which are necessary. It sounds like if Karen's not communicating with customers, the whole business comes to a stop. Yeah. So going forward, how do you make sure that that communication's happening and protected? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the other women we just hired, she's going to be my admin assistant Beautiful. in addition to working on some of her own clients. And so she's monitoring my emails and she's checking voicemails and she, and she, she's the kind of person she can just kind of figure out how to deal with some of this stuff on her own. Is she going to handle your scheduling too? I hope so. Okay. We're, we're still working on that, but yeah, I, I need someone to schedule me, um, and, uh, and watch my calendar. Probably the smartest hire for so I believe the QBR for our company is the proliferation, proliferation <laughs> of the Profit First books and the speaking behind it. The speaking really is it because it gets more people discovering the book, talking, mm -hmm. they call yeah. in. So I got to be speaking all the time. Yeah. And the smartest hire I've made to protect that is Kelsey. Okay. She constantly manages my schedule and she defends and protects to make sure that I'm available to do speaking. There's no conflicts. And scheduling is hard. Oh, it yeah. is hard. It is unbelievable, and right? I, yeah, because I'm defensive of my time too. And how do you teach that to somebody else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, can I borrow Kelsey for a while? <laughs> she, yeah, she, you know, she can do a session. You can yeah. bring your admin in here. Kelsey could do a session. I mean, I think the key was that Kelsey had to know what the QBR was for me, the Queen Bee role. Mm -hmm. And once I explained, like I got to be speaking, she makes sure that gets on the calendar and happens. Mm -hmm. If a speaking opportunity presents itself and there's something already scheduled, she'll shift around it. Yeah. But she won't shift speaking to support something else. Okay. Because she knows that's the priority. And that's been huge. And I hear that's what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. I suspect that admin hire is going to be very effective for you. So- how are you feeling if you get pneumonia again? You know, you, you had it twice now, which was shocking. What, what if it hits you again? I pray God, of course, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, I hope it doesn't. Yeah. Um, well, I definitely need to listen to the doctors and take better care of myself so it doesn't linger for two months like yeah. it did this time. Um, and, and you know, and then when I know I've got it, I need to, because I know it, it, it it's, you don't get better overnight from it. You just don't. Right. And so I need to communicate that to you know, and, and look at what I've got coming up and, and really, you know, be more mindful of, of letting clients know and, you know, and looking ahead at my schedule and yeah. figuring out what I can, you know, what I can shift and what, you know, but communicate it that, Hey, you know, sorry, I'm you know down for the count right now. Yeah. Yeah. Now I realize, I mean, this was a serious setback for your business. You, yeah. you lost some customers it slowed you down, but was this all also kind of an awakening? Oh yeah. Are you at the phase where you're grateful for what happened now or was, are you still like, this was the worst thing ever? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I can look at it that I'm great. I mean, you know, you never want to be sick, Yeah. but definitely was one of those wake up calls and, you know, all right, we, we need, because when I, so I ran my business by myself for 13 years before yes. I started hiring people and, um, and brought Rich on and, um, and this would happen then too, you know, I, I would have to deal with this then, right. but it was at a much smaller level. So right. it was still manageable. Right. 
but you know, it, it really made it clear how much we've grown and how much more there is to manage now and be responsible for. Yeah. I presume you're the biggest change has probably been in you when, when it was just you, you do everything. Mm -hmm. Now you have six people that you're accountable to yeah, and they're accountable to you. Mm -hmm. how, how has your role changed? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not working in the business anymore or very yeah. little. Yeah. And, mm. and um, I've become a manager, you know, I'm managing people now. That's yeah. my job. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a lot different. It's way different. It's a whole different mindset. Yeah, totally. Is. Yeah. Yeah. And is your office is mostly it's virtual, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, that's a difficult <clears throat> challenge also, isn't it? Um, Yes and no. The more challenging part is when we have team meetings because we're running. At, my house is getting too small for that. Oh, so, so they're virtual, but local enough to come in. Or yeah, they fly everybody's in or... everybody's within an hour, hour and a half from okay. from us. So um, usually about every other week we have a team meeting where we all meet for like four hours. All right, we got a space here for you. Seriously. Yeah, we might take you up on that. Oh, it's available. Yeah, we, it's our event space. I mean, <laughs> yeah. wow, we could fit a team meeting easily. Yeah, yeah, because my my office in my house is just getting a little too crowded. Okay, it will so. cost you cookies though. I, I love those cookies. <laughs> <laughs> so, Karen, as you start to delegate a little bit more to your employees, mm -hmm. how have you been creating your systems and processes or documenting so that that professionalism and that degree of uh, expertise is translated as they do the tasks. Um, that part actually has been pretty easy because I think we've hired good people who get it. Yeah. Um, you know, and so we, yeah, I, I think the hardest part for me is just letting go. Uh, you know, I heard I, that before a few times. Yeah. I mean, when you've been by yourself for so long and doing everything and wanting to be in control, it's, it's hard to, I, I've gotten better at it. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I still have my moments where I'm like, I can't, I just can't give that up yet. Yeah. I found that the business owner is the kind of controls the spigot for the business growth. Mm -hmm. And most business owners, myself included, has a spigot closed or shut down very much. And I get pissed. There's not enough stuff flowing out. I'm like, what's wrong with my business? Mm -hmm. And I never consider, oh, if I just open up the spigot, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's yeah. the release the control and let the yeah. company yeah. run it. Yeah. Yeah. Ironically, it's when you go, you get pneumonia and you're forced out of the business mm -hmm. or I get these speaking engagements. I'm not here. Mm -hmm. The business actually does better. Better. Yeah. I was going to ask that too. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm blown away at the fact that your degree of quality of work and deadlines and everything were basically maintained. The only difference was that level of communication. Do you have a different respect and, you know, comfort with your team now that you've had that experience mm. or what are, what are your thoughts and takeaway from, from yeah. that side of things? So yeah, it definitely showed me that I can trust in what my bookkeepers are doing. Um, and it showed me more clearly what their weaknesses were as well, because mm -hmm. that was very apparent. Those parts were very apparent um, more so when I was sick than, you know, if I was just going along. Um, so um yeah. So, you know, now the, the weakness parts we're working on and, but yeah, I definitely have more faith in them that they're getting the work done and, and that piece of it is happening, um, consistently. That's awesome. So that's awesome. You yeah. know, believe it or not, we're at time. Really? Yeah. It's, <laughs> time flies. Now this is fascinating, but, but I, but I, I want to ask you one more question though, before right. we go is what's the advice you can depart to people looking to grow their practice. There's people listening right now. They're doing the same thing, going from the solo mm -hmm. like you have. What's the advice that you can impart um, to them? Proactively communicate. Okay. Yeah. When something happens, don't think you're Superman and or Superwoman and you can do it anyway. Um, and remember that you're human and your clients are human and they understand. They're going to understand when something, you know, life gets in the way. And um, yeah. Yeah. And you can do the proactive communication with your team, it's, it's mm -hmm. your vendors, your clients. I mean, you're saying your clients, but everyone, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for us, it was mostly clients that we didn't communicate well with. Um, my team knew that I was sick. Um, but, you know, you just, you, you, it's like the post office, you know, rain or shine. So yeah. that's my, that's always been my mindset. The work gets done. Yeah. And, you know, I can't let the clients know if something's going on with me. I mean, 
Right. You know, because that's personal and you keep that separate. Right. Um, so the mail still gets delivered. It may just be someone else dropping your mailbox for now, but the mail's going to get delivered. And if you just communicate that, yeah, that people will accept that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, here's what we're going to do. Uh, in a second, we're going to summarize what we learned. You hang tight. Don't leave. We're going to talk okay. about you, but <laughs> now you got to hear about it. Um, so we're going to talk about what we learned. Uh, we're going to have a GMAP now task, but first. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, that was, it sounded different than the old ones. That's so weird. There was a big drum buildup, but first I want to thank our corporate partners. Yeah. Here's the, this, <laughs> this is the moment you've been waiting for Mom. <laughs> It is. <laughs> You've been sitting like all day. She's like, I can't wait for this. So Mo, do you want to just kind of rattle through each one of our sponsors, our corporate partners, and also say, explain what they do? I'd love to. Right. Well, now. So first off, we have Nextiva, oh, our voice wow. over IP phone providers for small businesses. I love them. And, and quite frankly, they're very economical. You yeah. know, they're just a really, really cool resource. And you, by the way, you live on that phone, right? I do. You're constantly on your yeah. next Eva. It's so true. And it just, they're very, very reasonable. Yeah. Very, we, very reasonable. I think we're one of the last few businesses that's on the phone so much. We do over a hundred calls out of this office a day. Wow. Uh, among our team. And so our ROI on the phone system, it costs like a penny a phone call, basically. Because wow. yeah. we use it so much, but whatever. I okay. love them. And they're super supportive. They super are. supportive. Who else um, you got? We also have Fundera. Oh my. Right. <laughs> a single source online funding for entrepreneurs. Um, next we have Receipt Bank. Oh my. And you know, I, I heard Ron discussing them a little bit, but this they are really cool. I mean, if you're looking for systems and processes in your business, this is a great resource. Um, because the power of automation is is just that. It's power. Um Funbox also. Oh my. Love Funbox. <laughs> they are the simplest and fastest way. I have I I've used them once so far, but I love Joanna. Yeah. The, oh, yes. my, Joanna is amazing. See, and that's that's the takeaway. You know, mm -hmm. these resources are awesome. Your business is awesome. But the people, that's what makes it. Isn't that funny, right? Yeah. So Karen's business is determined by the presence of Karen. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Fundbox, Joanna, who's just a live wire, <laughs> yeah. is amazing. So yeah. what does Fundbox do? Fundbox, they actually, um, you know, they... I, they fix your cash problems. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a cash flow accelerator, right? Yep. So if I have an invoice that's due and I'm not collecting it, they'll release the funds. Yep. So did you use it for internal stuff or did you use it for a client? I used it internally just because I think at ProfitCon they were given us all, um, you know, to a try it for a yeah. special deal to try it. Mm -hmm. So I did a couple of invoices that a client wasn't paying me for. And so, yeah, it was great. They fronted the money in and I paid it back over, I don't know, eight weeks. As the client paid you back? Well, no, you pay... Regardless, you pay okay. it back, but over, but if you, if you get paid by the client, then you can pay in full. I got you. Or you pay in, in month, in like And weekly the interest payments. rate is reasonable, right? Or negligible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's better that you don't use a credit card. You don't cash in the credit card. You just get the cash mm -hmm. up front and the interest rate is far better than yeah. the credit card. And it's yeah. quick. And it's quick. How oh quick my God. It? Cause it's integrated with QuickBooks. So you just click on what mm -hmm. invoices you want funded and I think the next day the money was there. Wow. Sweet wow. relief. Wow. That's what yeah. that's called. And also yeah. thanks to netpayroll.net for sponsoring this episode. Um, we love you. And uh, let me see. Is there anyone else we wanted to talk about? I think that's it, right? George Takei? Oh, my. There he is. I love George Takei. <laughs> All right. So there you have it. That's our corporate partners. Definitely check them out. Maybe they're applicable to your business or maybe not, but they're probably applicable to your clients' businesses. All right. Now's the moment I've been waiting for. Oh, that was better. That one was a little bit better. The drummer was tick, tick, tick better. Absolutely. I want to talk about what we learned about. So, Aaron, um, the floor is going to go to you. What did you learn as we interviewed Karen today? What's your takeaways? Power of communication. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's and it's something that we can all all definitely take away from. Doesn't matter what industry, what yeah. your focus is, communication. Um, but also, I loved how you said they will be responsive. And understand because we're all human mm -hmm. and that's i mean business at the end of the day it's human to human no different as far as relationships go yeah you know and so i, I love that yeah i think that's a great takeaway for me too I, to me what i was hearing from you karen is that communication is kind of the grease for the gears mm -hmm. you had all the gears they were kept on moving along mm -hmm. but they weren't being greased and it caused this problem but just communicating mm -hmm. um I also like you, you kind of under promise over deliver was what you're setting up for is, is set an expectation that you know you can deliver on and then start beating it. And if you're not, before you fail to deliver on the expectation, set a new expectation that's out there. You keep on putting it out and people appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, I also heard that you, you, you had customers at risk 
you proactively communicate with them and say, listen, we want to do something uh, because we know that we put you risk slightly to mm -hmm. discount your pricing. So I think that's a smart time to, to offer some kind of remuneration back to them. Um, and then I love that you hired an admin. I think that's smart. You found what your business critically needs from you mm -hmm. and you're starting to put some protecting walls around it. So I think it's all stuff that our GMAP listeners can, can do uh, right now. Okay, so that's what we learned. Uh, now it's time for uh, Ron's obi Ron psychology of sales. <laughs> if you, you hear that lightsaber in the background, Ron is on vacation, um, so enjoying himself. It sounds like he's on vacation all the time because <laughs> does. because I'm always doing these shows without him. <laughs> the reality is, I think I do more vacation than Ron does. The thing is, if I'm not here, Ron can't do a show by himself. Right. Not that he can't; he technically doesn't know how to run all the equipment. <laughs> So I kind of lock myself in. So it always sounds like Ron's on vacation, but it he really is not. It just happens this way. And then, of course, we do all these episodes back to back. So he's away for like three days. It sounds like he's away for six months. Mm -hmm. Not true. Uh, so Obi Ron, if you're listening to this, we miss you. Uh, yes, we miss you. And please write down some good psychology sales tips. So when you come back, um, he last time he came back and he he started talking about his vacation, all these things he discovered. So hopefully he does that again. Uh, but I do have one more thing for you. The one thing I can do without Ron, if this thing will play. Oh, there it is. This is this song get you psyched, Aaron? I love this song. Do you if I just had like a mantra for my life. This is it? Hello? Uh, dun, dun, dun. Do you uh, uh, do you crank this up like with Nora in the morning? <laughs> oh, we have dance parties every day. Point to your butt. Point to your butt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, before this show, we were talking about how Nora had learned the word butt, and now she points to her her one-year-old And if anybody asks, I'm going to blame it on somebody else. <laughs> no, I didn't no. know where she learned that. So inappropriate. God, <laughs> who are these people? Well, this is the, the, the GMAP Now test. This is the one test that if you do this right here, right now, you will see growth in your business. And it's real simple. Actually, Karen laid it on us. It's hire an admin. Hire an admin. It's not... It, you can never do it too soon. Even if you're a solo practitioner, you have one client, a part-time virtual admin will start protecting that key role you serve. The smartest hire you can have is an admin. Because think about it. You take the most valuable person in the company and say, hey, uh, stop doing what's driving the company forward and could you you know, make these phone calls for us? Could you file these papers for us? Could you do this? Do this? Could you do the scheduling? You're taking the most important person and you have them doing important tasks but not the critical role to the company. you got to defend that role. So by simply hiring an admin, you'll start protecting yourself and allow yourself to do the most important thing to drive your business forward. Yes. That's right. That's your mind blowing up. Do you hear that? <laughs> yes. It's an atomic bomb. This is an actual atomic bomb, I think, recording. Um, and there's that weird... Do you hear that? Yeah. Uh, that sounds yeah. very realistic. Very realistic. That's yep. how an atomic bomb sounds. All right. Um, let me just look at my little notes here. Well, I guess that's basically it. I, there's one more thing. I mean, I do, I do want you leaving a rating for us. So go to iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, uh, wherever you li listen to this, leave us a rating. Leave a comment. What did you learn from Karen? Post it up there. We want to hear it because then we'll respond to it and we'll tell Karen. Please respond to it. She's like, no, that's not my queen role. I won't do that anymore. Not even, you know, nothing will allow me to do that. So then she'll have someone else do it. Maybe her admin will respond. Um, so go leave us a rating. But there's one more thing you got to do. You got to visit ProfitFirstProfessionals.com. Absolutely. Right? That's the yes. website. That's where it gets started. Yes. So here's what you do. Go to that little thing called the interweb, internet. Type in Profit First Professionals in your little uh your browser. I don't know why I call it a little browser, but go to your little browser, Chrome or whatever. Do it on your phone. Type in ProfitFirstProfessionals.com. Then when you get to the website, click on the Become button. Now, if you want to learn about Profit First Professionals, there'll be a video that pops up when you decide that you want to explore this. You can fill out a form. That'll connect you with Obi-Ron Kenobi himself. Uh, Mike Scalise is talking to a lot of folks. Deborah Angela, I am. We'll tell you about Profit First Professionals. Is it a fit for you? I don't know. We have to explore. I think about, yes, 70% of the people we talk to, it's a fit. We do turn away people. We just actually turn away someone because we know what you need to do here to be successful. And there's some people that just are not ready. So if, if it's premature, it's not ready, it, it, we're not going to do this. But we should explore it together. So go to ProfitFirstProfessionals.com, click on the Become button, check us out, learn about the, the organization on the video, fill out the form, and we'll get the conversation started. If it is a fit, well, hot diggity dog. 
And we are off to the races. <laughs> yes, we're you are. <laughs> off to the races. Yesterday, how many people were on that call? Or what happened there to were literally here? like 15 people in our June class. We had 15 people in our June 15 class. 15 people. That's Ish. awesome. Yeah. Give or take one or two. That It was amazing. I don't know what happened to my music there. I accidentally pushed the button, cut, cut it off. 15 people dramatic just signed pause. up. Yeah, it was a dramatic pause. And <laughs> they are bringing profitability to their clients. Yes, sir. They're implementing profits in their business. They're bringing profitability to And their businesses. Themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what we got to do. One last time. Go to ProfitFirstProfessionals.com right now. Fill out the form. And let's get profitability coming to your clients. Let's get it coming into your business. And, uh, you know, let's eradicate entrepreneurial property, you know, together. You know, let's do it. Idea. Let's do idea. it. All right. Everyone, thanks for joining us. Be sure to join us next week. We have uh, a few people coming in to talk about the millennials and the impact that they're having on the accounting profession. It's going to be fascinating. So uh, we'll see you next week. Later. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.